Hello! So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do a Christmas one. I'm going to be using red and green. We're going to do the curl. We are going to do the curl poof method. And I'm going to be using this sign here just because it matches so well. But I had a couple other choices. Uh, you can find these pretty easily and you can find this one pretty easily. Now mine came from Sims. All these came from Sims. But I did put in the list where you could get these from Craft Outlet. We're going to be using ornaments. We're going to be using some tinsel and ribbon. We're also going to be using some of these curly picks. Alright, so our ribbon is Merry Christmas to match our sign. And then we have a striped red, white, and green. Then we have red and white. And we have a little plaid just to give a little bit of interest. Okay? But I'm going to show you a trick on how to do this poof curl that's going to make it a lot easier for you. But I'm going to get my camera set up and get my little tools out. And this is uh, the metallic, just the basic metallic mesh. Okay, so let me get that set up and we'll get started. Okay, so we are going to be using one of the red work wreaths. Now, of course, if you don't have a work wreath, you can absolutely use just a regular elevated wreath and put ties on it. So this really is just an elevated wreath that has attached these ties that are already put on. So it's the same kind of wreath, it just has something already done on it. Okay? So you could use red, you could use green. Alright, so what I'm Okay, so what I'm going to show you, and I am going to kind of cut my head off a little bit because I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so we're going to see if this makes it a little bit easier for you to see my table. Because I definitely want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to keep the inner core of your rolls because you're going to be using that to make your poof curl much easier and you're going to do it without having to measure so we have 18 ties on our wreath form so we're going to need nine of this color and nine of this color now you could do this with more than two colors but we're just going to stick to two colors so what you're going to do is you are going to first, it is always a good idea to when you're starting out, take your cutter and just make a nice clean line on your mesh because oftentimes when you're starting out, it isn't exactly straight. Okay? So you really want to do that. It's going to make it a little bit easier for you. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your extra roll and you're going to put it right on your mesh and you're going to go around twice so one two so when you can see that again then you have a good amount and you can cut it off okay just like that and you can put this aside and grab your wreath so you could go ahead and pull your wreath ties out to begin with so that you're not having to do this as you're going. So then all you're going to do is slide this out. You're going to grab about four inches on each side. You want to make sure that that opening is on the bottom and you're just going to go right to your wreath and tie it down with good time. Okay. So you see how quick that is. We have a nice little poof and we have nice little curls. Okay? You see? So we can go ahead and open these up on the bottom. 
When you're doing the proof curl, it is better to start on the bottom. Hi. I'm just recording. You're okay with yeah. Alright, so we're going to start on the second color, and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just using this roll to hold it down so that I can get a nice clean edge. Okay? So the clean edge is really a good thing with this method because you're actually using the roll itself to get your measurement. Okay, so put your roll down, hold it, roll it two good times until you see this come back up at the top. Cut it off. Whoops. Okay, and then pull it out. That's all you have to do. Then you just want to grab the ends. Ugh, redo this one. I don't know why that one came out all squirrely. Okay, so once you have a nice clean edge, we're just going to take it. We're going to hold it. And we're going to go around one, just like this. Whoops. We're going to go around one time, then two times. Okay? Cut it off. Pull it out. Whoops. <laughs> All right, then you just want to grab the end four inches on this side. And four inches on this side. I don't want you to worry if you get these little pieces right here because we're just going to go back and cut those off. They're not going to make any difference. You want to make sure that opening is at the bottom, okay? And you're going to take your piece and you're going to go tie it on one side, open up your tie, and tie it down on top of the one that you just did. And then pull your poop out. That's it. Now what you can do with this piece, grab your scissors, cut it off. You're not going to see it. It's not important. Okay? So then we're alternating colors, so I'm going to grab, well, I went before it, so let's Let's just do another red. So you really just want to hold it. Doesn't have to be real tight, but you want to do a good one, two rolls, like that. Cut it off. Pull it out. Just like that. Then grab the ends. Like that. Have that piece that's open at the bottom. And tie it down. Just like this. Okay? And then pull out your poof. Just like that. Okay? Now we'll go to the green. And we're just going to keep doing this process over and over. Okay? So pull it down. Just pull it around one, two, until it comes back around. Cut it off. Pull it out. And as you do this a few times, it will get easier and easier. The first time it might feel a little awkward, but it will get easier. Keep that part open. Open your tie back up. Place it down. and go to your next tie. So you're creating a poof in the middle, okay, and your curls at the end. All right. So we did green, we're going to do red. So this is a really great way because it's faster, you don't have to measure. So, and if you're having trouble with these, this is a very easy way to do it. So, one, two. 
So we want it all the way around that second time. And then we can trim it off and pull it out. Okay, then grab the ends. Okay, like that. So you're getting about four inches on the ends. Okay, open that tie back up. Put this one down. Always keeping in mind that you have this piece at the bottom that's open facing the frame so that you will be able to open it with your poof. Okay? There we go. So I'm just pulling that curl out so that it will be out and not stuck under my poof. All right. All right, so see I noticed this one's kind of getting off a little bit, so I'm just going to trim it, make it straight again. That is another good thing about doing it this way. So just tuck those ends under and curl one, two, there we go. Now this is easier if you have a rotary cutter. would be a little bit more difficult if you had scissors. I would say if you're going to invest in tools, the rotary cutter is definitely something you would want to invest in. It's just a cleaner cut. You're going to get less frays. Okay, so we'll place this one down. Open this tie back up. And place this one down. So you want know, to make sure that curl is above your poof so it doesn't get stuck down here at the bottom. There we go. So we have our first level on. So now we're going to go to the top. So I'm going to open the ties up. This just makes it easier when we're going around. All right. So we'll start with our green, and we'll just do our curl. Okay, there's one, there's two, okay? So rolling it two times is good because it's going to help you cover up those frays and get a nice curl. All right, so I'm just going to start right up here. And pull out my poof, making sure to keep those ends tucked in. Then you're not going to have that problem with the fray because it's going to stay tucked in. Okay. Don't worry about it kind of standing up because we're going to put a second row on top of this and it's going to push it down. All right. We will start right here where we stopped and we will start on our second top row. So what we're doing, okay, pulling all those curls out, is we are opening it and we are essentially taking that row that we just made right here and we're pushing it down to the middle. So then when we pull out our poof, it's more towards the center. Okay, there we 
okay so you see now we have three rows okay so we started right here so we'll just keep going around this off do our next curl okay. so you see when you put that third row on there it gets a lot fuller so you're going to end up with four curls in each one of these okay and you're going to end up with three levels. Now they're not going to match exactly, so don't stress if they don't. That's just because of the way that there are ten on the bottom and eight on the top. So that's normal. look and see if there's any places that you need to kind of tweak a little bit because they might get a little smashed as you're working but for the most part I think it looks good excellent you just want to make sure that your ties aren't tucked in anywhere so you'll be able to get to them you can trim off any little pieces you see oh, I think we're good you're always going to have little tiny pieces. Just remember to tuck that piece in and just trim this off. Okay. All right. Now we're going to move on to ribbons. So let's move this away. Let's put our ribbons up here. So let's talk for a minute about how to know how long to cut your ribbons. And just to let you know, so you can see how much is left, so there's enough to do another one. So one roll should do one and two rolls should do two. Now with your ribbon, Alright, so with your ribbon, the good rule of thumb is, so we have, um, these are essentially 10 inch poof curls, okay, so we would want between 12 and 14 inches on our ribbon. So it really depends on if you want to see more ribbon or more mesh. Okay, so we are actually going to do 14 inches, and there are several ways that you can cut your ribbons. So you can measure it out on your mat, okay, and cut it that way. You can use your spool holder. So, let's see, between this one and this one is 14, so you can grab it here and wrap it around. That's another way. All right. You can take a piece of cardboard, cut it at 7 inches, wrap it around, and when you get up to the top, that's 14. Or you can take something like a perfect tail or a long piece of cardboard and wrap it around. So this is actually 14 inches. So I will wrap them around. I'm going to have an even number of ribbons, so we're going to need 9 of each. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So if we trim that off, trim it off at the top, and we can trim it in the middle, and then we have nine pieces. We are going to fold it over and cut at an angle away from you to get that nice little dovetail like this okay
We're going to do the same process with every one of these ribbons. Okay? I find it more efficient if you will just spend a minute, take your ribbons, separate them, okay, and then put them together. Now, one thing that I like to do is I want to put colors that are going to pop against each other. So that's what I do. So now we have our ribbons ready. I'm going to bring our wreath back and we're going to start on the bottom. So we're just going to take our ribbons, we're going to fold them over, pinch in the center, and then I want you to take it and take your fingers like this and I want you to pull it towards the bottom. You could also take your thumb and your fingers and pull towards the bottom. So you want to do that so that you can go ahead and start getting that wire to be pointing down. It's not necessary to open your tie again. You want to tie it three times and you want to pull pull nice and tight to get it to come forward. Okay? So fold over, gather it in the center, and get that going. Alright, and you just put it down, tie it good two or three times, and pull it out. So you're separating and pulling at the same time. Okay. That's how you get them to really do what you want them to do. So, you just keep doing the same process. Gather, curl, place it in the center, and then pull. And you want to pull so that it's opposites. So see I have these two ribbons on this side and these two, I don't have this two together. Okay. This ribbon will help cover up any other holes and if you're going after this you can kind of maneuver your ribbon to kind of hide any holes that you see. Okay. Move this so I can make sure you can see. So you're just pulling and separating. Pulling and separating. Just like that. Gather, curl, place it, and then pull and separate, and then pull and separate in the opposite direction. There we go. We're going to do the exact same thing on the top. Because our sign is large, we're not going to be able to do crisscross. So if you have a smaller sign or you're going to do a sign on the side, if you're going to put your sign on the side, then you can do the crisscross. You just kind of want to determine it based on where your sign placement is and how large it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. 
last one, I think. And we'll do the same thing to the top. Start on top. So see you're pulling forward. Pulling and separating. Okay. Pull, separate. Move around to the front, pull, separate. There we go. You see how nice they lay when you have that little bend in it? That really does make all the difference. And you also want to have a nice pinch. If you don't have a good pinch, you could end up with ribbons that are kind of wonky and go all different ways. Okay. Pull separate. Pull separate. There we go. If you are looking to economize when you are making wreaths, I would suggest that you just do 12 inch ribbons because it is going to be a little bit less. It's still going to look very nice. And you do get the 50 yard rolls whenever you can. So, it just gives you a lot more room for profit. So you see sometimes you do have to pull them a couple of times to get them to go where you want them to go and to stay in place. There we go. Now, you see how well our sign sits inside there? So this sign already comes with two holes in it. 
It is better if you can have a few more than that. But it is a very thick side. So this is a very important point. When you are getting your supplies, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to put a hole in it. Now there are ways to put holes in something that's this hard. You can actually take and I'm going to pull these out so that they're, they're not all squished behind our sign. You can take a screwdriver, like a Phillips head screwdriver, and place it on the edge and get a little dent in it, okay, and then use your beadsmith to poke a hole in it. It is better if you have that many in it, just because... Yeah, you know, it's it's just more stable. These are 24 gauge 18 inch wires, and this is what we're going to be using. I'm using this because it's a heavier sign, and so with a heavier sign, you really want heavier wire. You want to tie it in the back, nice and tight. So a lot of times, I use my 18 gauge wire but this sign is very hefty so there's a good chance that that 18 gauge wire could break after it gets to someone's house or on my door and that just really would not be good so I'm going to take this sign and place it on here I'm going to run my wires right around so that I can get down to the frame, one on one side of the frame, one on the other side. Okay. And I'm going to place it and then I will show you where it is. One thing you can do is take your little ties here and run it once around that wire and it will help hold that sign in place. Okay. So we're going to do this other side here. Okay. So I just move things around, slip it under the mesh, and go to the frame. And then I have the other piece on the other side. And I just tie it around the frame. So you want to tie it tight enough that it's not going to come off, but you don't want it to squash anything. So then you can take your tie here, go around your wire, and tie it on. It's going to help cover that wire and it's going to help secure it a little bit more. And you just want to make sure that your ribbons are good. You still have some curls out here, so you might need to pull them out a little bit. Okay. So you just want to take a minute and do that. You can kind of pull them back behind here, like this. Okay. All right, so let's look at the bottom. All right. So if you see one, you can just kind of slip them in there. See? Like this. And then when we get around the front, we'll kind of straighten them out a little bit because you don't want to get all of your good pieces hidden in the back. Alright, so here's the wire where I tied it and I will just go ahead and take this and further tie it around another piece just to keep it nice and tight in here. Okay, so you want to be careful you don't poke your mesh especially with the thicker wire. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, you just want to kind of maneuver your curls around, make sure that they're in a place that can be seen. Okay. There we go. 
can pull them down like this. You can have some coming up around your ribbons. Okay, and then re-fluff your ribbons. Make sure they're all nice and neat. Because they will get squashed as you're moving things around. Okay, there. You see? Okay, these ribbons need to be worked on. Okay. So if you see that something is kind of getting in the way, just move it down like this. Just kind of pull it down behind your ribbon. Okay. Like that. There we go. All right, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some of this tinsel tubing. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure out a yard. Now this does scrunch up, so you want to get make sure you get pretty good to a yard. All right, and we're going to do... three of them. Okay. There we go. Don't have to be perfect. Okay. So now we're going to take this, okay, and we are going to make a knot. I mean, we're going to take this and we're going to make a circle, just like this. And we're going to pull the circle in the middle and then you can just pull the two ends in, just like that. So what we're getting is this nice little loop, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to make a triangle. So we're going to put one up here, and this little bit of tie we have left, and just tie it in, pull it out, you want to make sure you can see it. Okay. So when you're designing, a really great little trick to keep in mind is you either want to do a triangle, so this would be the top of the triangle, these would be the bases, these could be the bases. It can really be any way you want. Or you can do um, balance. So if you did it here, you would do it here. If you did it here, you would do it here. Okay. You can also take this as a circle, twist the circle, and come down, and then grab in the middle. It's really either way that is a little bit better for you. So we're going to make our triangle here. So just tie it in and pull it out. Okay. So circle. Let's do the twist again. Twist so you have two circles and you just pinch it in the middle. Okay, this will be our other tie. So you see how we made a triangle? Just like that. Okay, now. Alright, so we've gotten the top. Now we're going to take this and we're going to do three at the bottom. So we're going to cut another yard. I'm doing this is because if you add things to the bottom you're going to get more dimension. This time we're going to do it like this and we're just going to make a little bow. Okay just a little bow and we're going to go here and here for our triangle. So your triangle can be kind of off-center and that's fine too. No one is going to know that you're making a triangle. It's just going to help their eye move around your project. And that's all you're doing. Okay, so let's see. We did one here. We're going to do one here. There we go. And this time, we're going to make our triangle point at the end. 
So, just making a little bow, just like that. I'm going to put it here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with this. So we use six yards of that. One thing I always like to do is shake my wreath and make sure that this is on here nice and snug. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little pop of color. So these are just curly picks, okay, and we're going to use four of them. So we're going to put two picks together, okay, and we are going to, so these are my bolt cutters just because these can be a little bit difficult to cut, so there we go. I only want two, so I'm going to take this piece out. So I'm just going to trim it off right here. There is wire in here. And, and I'm going to start my glue pot over here. So this is just a, this right here. It's just a skillet from Walmart. Now, these are in bunches of three, so I'm going to pull one out of each one of these, and I'm going to make another bunch. So if you get these in two, then you would just use the two. Okay. I have one, two, three, four. So I'm just twisting these two together. And we'll just have one. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one back here. And this is going to give our project some height, okay? So we're going to kind of pull them and turn them like that, okay? So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this tie, and I'm going to kind of turn it and make a little nice little place that I can glue something. So I'm just going to take this, run it through my glue, okay. and then I'm going to stick it right in with this tie. So the ties are really great for holding things in, okay? All right, there we go. So we got one. All right, so we're doing our triangle again. So we have, there's the base of our triangle. We're going to go here, and we're going to go here, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. Take this, kind of. Twist it, make a nice little place we can put our tie. Okay, and I'm putting this on the second level, so on the bottom. Okay, all right. We put one there, one there, one there, and we're going to put the other one over here. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So we just twist, make our nice little place. Okay. Run it through our glue. Okay. And then just stick it right in here. 
So you want to make sure it's in there good so it will so it will hold. And you can shorten these and pull them out. So you can make this as undramatic or dramatic as you want. So simple or dramatic as you want. And since we have three left, I think what I'll do is I'll just keep these separate and do three singles. Okay, so we'll do one here. All right, so make sure this is all right. There we go. Now I'm going to do one here. Okay. So in this case, I might just kind of glue it onto the side. There we go. And then pull it out. There we go. And this one is going to go up here. So you see how we're making triangles, which are making your eye go around the project. So that's what you're doing. You're making it go around the wreath and just giving it more dimension. Okay. So I'm gluing it kind of underneath here. So we can kind of pull it out a little bit. Wonderful. Alright, so let's pull this back a little bit. Okay. So you see how it's looking now? Alright. So the last thing we're going to do is just add in a few little ornaments. Put one there, one there. Now, when you do this one, you want to make sure your ribbons are in the right place because I'm just going to glue it with the little bracket and all. And I'm going to glue it right into that and it's going to hold my ribbons in place. Okay. Okay. So make sure my ribbons are good. And I'm going to kind of push it down in there. All right, last one. So we're gonna get our ribbons in place here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Stick it to me. Now I'm going to put a few on the bottom. Okay. So, making sure all my ribbons are in place. Like 
And so I'm going to put them where we don't have something else. So see, we have our, our little mesh here. We have that here. So we'll put one here. And so we've already created our triangle, so these should fit just fine because we're just filling in within our triangle, okay? You kind of want to push it in so that you can see it, but it's not really jumping out at you, okay? And we'll put one here, and that'll be it. And we'll be done. All right. Now you, of course, could put them all if you choose. You could skip the tubing. That is optional. But I do like it with tubing. I think it looks very nice. All right. And we're done. We are done with our first project. All right, let me pull it up. And there it is. Okay, so let me talk to you about a few options. You could do these in red or green. I just did white because I wanted them to stand out. You can do these or not. You could change out the red for some white. And there you go. There's our first project. 